welcome back to the fire panel. Today we're taking a look at the brand new system sensor LED horn strobes generously sent my way brand new in box from Honeywell. This new line of devices offers not only LED strobes, but a few other handy features not seen before from system sensor. We're going to take a look at all the new features and then hook them up to see them in action. Honeywell provided me with three LED devices to look at today. We have the standard wall mount red horn strobe, the P2R LED, the strobe variant of its little brother, the SGR LED, which can fit nicely over a single gang back box, and finally, we have the PC2W LED, a ceiling mounted white horn strobe. Let's start with the P2R LED. P2R has been in system sensor model numbers since the introduction of the Spectra Alert Advanced series in 2006. In general, the P indicates it's a horn strobe, two meaning two wires, and the R indicates that the device is red. Similarly, horns are defined by H, strobes by S, four wires by four, and white devices by W. The original P2R was a direct replacement of the predecessors, namely the P1224MC and the P241575 from the Spectra Alert series dating back to 1997. With the Spectra Alert series came a new synchronization protocol for System Sensor, allowing devices to be synchronized even if they were on different circuits. That same sync protocol is still in use today and available on the LED series of devices. More on that later. Looking at the P2R LED, while very similar to the P2RL, you'll notice a few main changes to the devices. Of course, the former Xenon strobe has been replaced by a rounded LED strobe. The portion of the device here that contains the strobe and the horn is raised higher from the base than the L series, but at the highest point the LED comes out is only slightly further than the Xenon strobe did on the L series. A diagnostic port has been added to the top of the device to allow troubleshooting power to devices without pulling each device off the wall. I'll show you how to use that when we demo these devices. The text, do not paint, has been moved from the top of the device to a simple icon at the bottom of the device. The candela selector has been moved from the bottom center to the bottom left, and is now a rotating dial on the back rather than a slider. Continuing on the back of the device, you'll notice we still have the same eight tones, patterns, and volumes, but there's also a setting for temporal four. While the two mounting brackets between the L series and the LED series are very similar, they are not the same and cannot be used interchangeably. Beyond that, it looks like there might be a slight difference in the paint texture and shade, both in the red and the white fire lettering on the sides. All around, this device has plenty of new features that I'm really excited to test out. The SGR LED is nearly identical to the P2R LED with two major differences. Most obvious is the lack of a horn considering this is only a strobe model. But of course, this device is only sized for a single gang mounting plate rather than a double gang. This is great for new installs looking to minimize their footprint, but many older installs may have a double gang box. I'd like to note too that the horns and strobes both come in either a single or double gang variant. And of course, we have the white ceiling mount PC2W LED. It has all the same features and changes as the other two devices, but personally, may be my favorite design where the round strobe 
fits really nicely in the round overall design of the device itself. The biggest difference between the ceiling mount and the wall mount variants of these devices is probably on the mounting plates themselves. The circular design of this plate covers the entire device and also includes an extra latching mechanism to easily install prior to screwing in. When taking the device down, you will need to unscrew the base first, followed by inserting a flathead screwdriver or something similar into the slot to pop it down. Now that we've seen these devices, let's head on out to the demo board and see them in action. Without making too much noise here, I'd like to show you guys how the diagnostic ports work. To start, any typical multimeter will do just fine. And all you have to do is you, have, you put your negative prong up here and your positive prong here. And if I have a solid connection, you'll see my meter change for the voltage that's currently there. When the device goes into alarm, you'll see that without taking the device off the wall, I can confirm that there's the proper roughly 24 volts coming to this strobe. All right, so let's dig into these new LED horn strobes. I have them set up on the NFW50X. This is the demo board, kind of a part two of the demo board, if you will, then redesigned just a little bit. But we're gonna start with the NBG12LX. Selective silence still works on these devices. You can see the strobes are blinking in sync with one another. You might notice that the strobes actually show up a lot easier in the videos now. So this is gonna be a bonus for LED notification for people like me who make videos on these devices. Now, unfortunately, I need to keep the noise brief because I live in a townhome and have neighbors who I don't want to upset. So I'm gonna reset the system here and when we come back, we will have two other devices that we're gonna look at at the same time. Okay, and side by side here we have two devices. We have the System Sensor Spectral Alert Classic right next to the brand new LED ceiling mount device. On the right hand side of the board, you'll notice that I also have a Gamewell M69 Pulse Station. This isn't one that's made anymore, but this system is set up to kind of simulate what is possible to be mixed and match in the field. These two strobes, despite being completely different technologies, should still sync. Let's give it a try. It's very hard to tell in the video because the xenon strobe doesn't always get picked up. However, the two strobes are exactly in sync with each other, despite the fact that one of them is an LED and the other one is a xenon strobe. Earlier in the video, I mentioned talking more about the sync protocol later. This is what is considered as system sensor legacy sync. As of right now, there is no way to sync in temporal four pattern, although these devices can do temporal four. And there are some other features that System Sensor is working on that could potentially be part of a new sync protocol coming either through some module or new power supplies or panels later on down the road. But for now, our devices and panels just utilize the legacy System Sensor sync that is compatible with devices going all the way back to the Spectre Alert Classic in 1997. So going back about 27 years, all of these devices continue to sync and work together, which I think is really cool. One more note I'm going to leave is that Honeywell did tell me that these devices are capable of Temporal 4. However, I have not yet been able to figure out how to actually activate that. What I was told is that they can do Temporal 4, they just cannot sync in Temporal 4 right now. 
but everything I've tried, uh, the settings on my panel have not been able to actually set off Temporal 4. So I'm not too sure what's going on there. I'm guessing that user errors are probably a factor. As of right now, only part of the lineup has been converted over to LED. There's still some Xenon strobe devices out there, and I'd imagine we're going to see some new LED devices coming from System Sensor here shortly. But until then, thank you guys for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one.